and welcome to Jay Krimmer Talk, um, our newest episode of 2017. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's a bit late, isn't it? Um, right, today we're talking about um, female genital mutilation and the issues surrounding it um, and things like that. The idea was thought of no sheen, so she'll be leading today. I have a couple of questions I'll probably be intersecting with, but yeah, um, let's just move forward and see what these girls have found this week uh, for our discussion. Hi, uh, my name is Nasheen and this is Rosalie. Hi. And mm-hmm. today's, as Janice said, today's topic is about FGM. And to begin with, I want to know, do you guys know what FGM is? I do now. You and do now? Do you know what? I should be quite humiliated because um, I am actually No, don't be because... because I didn't, didn't realise um, what the actual procedure was. I knew it was a problem and like within certain cultures, but I didn't actually know what the, the the full procedure was until I'd done a little bit of research mm-hmm. about it. To be fair, I don't think I knew what FGM was about three, four years ago. I'd, I'd never heard of it before, and I think there's loads of people out there who've never heard of FGM. FGM is basically considered to be female circumcision. It's when parts of the female's genitals are taken out. There's There's four different types, but it depends on what country you're from and what type they practice. Like, there's one where you can have it sewn up, there's one where you can have the clitoris cut out fully, there's one where you can have bits of it, but there's many reasons as to why it's done. Mm -hmm. There's many reasons as to why females allow it to happen to them. FGM has become a big problem now because you see people from other countries, other cultures moving into the UK, moving into Western, not just the UK, any Western country, when they come over, they bring their culture over. Yeah. And it's a practice that's been practiced in their culture, in their country for so many years. And for them to move away, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's just say like someone's come over from... It's like cultural conditioning. Yeah, really, like isn't someone's it? Like the, come something, from... It's something you're used to. So, uh, uh, you know, regarding the policing and aspect and um, con- controlling and the regulations surrounding FGM in this country, um, you know, certain cultures that have come from, say, for example, the first one I can think of um, is one I read on, is Sierra Leone. Their, yes. Their rates are, I think it was 80 80 something percent. 80%, 80, yeah. 80, I can't remember the specific percentage, but 80% of the women... 80% plus of the women um, from Sierra Leone um, have been victims of FGM and for me to use the word victim obviously you're going to we're deeming it as a problem and as a crime whereas if you are from um, you know them countries and them cultures you don't see it as a problem because it's it's a rite of passage but obviously for them to come over here and be told you know it's an offence um, I that's where that's where the, I think the problem lies is that people would think that the western are questioning their culture, they're attacking their culture, which means they have to protect it even more. And that means, that maybe means more FGMs are being practiced around the Mm -hmm. country, whether it's done in a secret, whether they're done at doctors, or obviously they're done secretly, because nobody will openly say... Well, no one's actually medically trained to carry, conduct such things, are they? There's not... Obviously, you do have you know medical practices, gynecologists and things like that who do certain things for medical purposes, but then there's no purpose within this country that I'm aware of um, that people do carry out FGM. Yeah, the World Health Organization said that there's no medical reasons for yeah. FGM to be carried out. That was part of their definition of yeah. it, wasn't it? Um, is there anything, you, any concerns you've got about FGM? I think, as you've raised, it's um, it's a kind of controversial subject because it does cross lots of different cultures and lots of different countries and some of the stuff I've read is how there's been this confusion that it's connected with religion as opposed to just culture and so therefore it can be something which is sort of used as a, um, a way of saying one religion is, is better than another or has considered things in a different way and I think that's really kind of divisive and I think centering it on culture is something that's really important. I think lo- there are some people who use religion as a reason to explain why they carry out FGM but when you start looking into it and looking at the research there's not much that says that it's a religious thing it's mm. tradition yeah. and it's a culture 
cultural aspect that people want to continue. Mm -hmm. But one of the main reasons I think FGM, people believe that FGM should be carried out, it's about control. It's about controlling the sexual desires. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, so it's basically we're male dominance, male taking over and controlling the women and he wants to control every aspect of it. Like even if it's, it's like sexual desires, even the smallest the smallest thing they want to control and in order to do that female circumcision is carried out. I personally think it's very unfair. Um because a lot of the FGM that happens um is 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 offend young women are getting offended mm -hmm. against um, and they have no... I think the youngest th th ever has been a few weeks that's old. Oh, my goodness. Gosh. Yeah, she... Mm. I don't remember her name at the top of my head right now, but she fights for it now. She's an activist. activist but she it. doesn't remember. Obviously, she's only a few weeks old, but it's affected her for the rest of her life. But would Be you not think... Say, for example, I'm completely against f female genital mutilation. I'm completely against it personally but do you not think maybe um it would be different had these women had a choice because there's not really a choice it's just a culture you're yeah. born into and it's just well you know you you, you come in some women it's a case of you coming of age so it's going to happen yeah. um, but then for some women as you said um she was a few weeks old you know it just happens yeah. because she's young because she's a part of that culture that she didn't ask to be um you know she didn't ask to be part of that culture yeah. and that's the issue that a lot of the women are facing it's happening because they have to, it has to happen yeah um you know. because nobody's questioning mm -hmm. it like i've spoken to a lot of they we don't refer to them as victims we refer to them as survivors because they've survived loads of them can die from it mm. i know one fgm survivor and i'm not going to name any names for certain mm -hmm. reasons but she nearly bled to death. She had to be rushed into hospital. Mm. But was hers but medically... Well, as I said, I've I argued earlier, there's no medical um, <coughs> essence behind it. But was it carried out, conducted just... You know, was it an underground procedure or was it... Most procedures are underground. It's one day they get, like... Usually, it take, it happens normally between the age of 4 to 13 because as they grow older, it'll become more dangerous. And then there's more risk, health risk. But most of them just happen randomly one day. The mom will decide that it's time for the daughter. But is that... Sorry, because there's certain no. you know, things I think you'll be able to clarify because yeah. you're working uh, more so actively in this field. Um, but is this the mom's decision, as in mom says, yes, I'm ready for my daughter to go through this procedure, or is this dad's, dad's input um, and you know, a bit of patriarchy into the, the the mother's mindset to say, okay, well, I don't really want my child, to, my daughter to go through this, but I've been through it and I know if she doesn't, then she's going to be a castaway or um, something like that for our culture. And I know that, yeah, I know certain cultures, you know, dad's very dominant and and it's very male um, dominant and male headed. So is it a case of mum says, okay, I'm ready for my daughter to go through this because I don't want her to... I think that's, that's a really good point, because no one's ever... I don't think anyone's ever questioned that, because the, it's happened to the mom, so she thinks, if it doesn't happen to my daughter, maybe she... Because mo in most societies and most cultures, if it doesn't happen to the child, they're shunned from the <laughs> society, and maybe mm -hmm. they don't want that to happen to their daughter. Maybe it's the father saying like behind because we we don't know full stories do we about all mm -hmm. these survivors maybe it's the father but it's also to do with it's happening in that area in that community so everyone has to do it yeah. and then if you've not haven't haven't had it done because there's like they have like chief women who do it so they know everyone in the area who's had it done mm -hmm. so if you haven't had it done then they shun or shun you from all the parties your until family you get it done. so it's a until bit of pressure, you get it really, it is, it? there's a lot of pressure so, so even, if, if, even if necessarily, for example, if I was living in that culture and I knew deep down I didn't want it done, I'd be deprived of yeah. certain rights and things like that just because I haven't had it done. And I think that's very unfair. And I think that's the, the, the root issue of FGM. It's more than just getting, you know, um, circumcised and getting certain bits snipped off and certain things sewed up. It's, it's the full culture around it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, like you said earlier, it's a bit of a taboo topic and it needs to be mm. spoken about. Um, and I do think that I was. This was going to be my next question. 
but I'm going to answer it first and then I'll ask. <laughs> but um, I do think in order to combat it, you need to change mindsets. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I have seen quite recently, uh, there's been a lot more activism around it. As I said, I didn't know what it was. I just heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've only recently done a lot of research around it and, you know, started to, um, you know, understand things further. But how do you think personally it can be combated? Is there any, anything, any way that, you know, you think it can be I changed or...? personally think the most important thing is education. Educating the young generation and telling them mm-hmm. what FGM is, what the consequences are. There's a lot of people out there now who are, who've had it done to them, but now they're fighting against to educate the new generation to tell them the consequences that they've had is to face. Is that people over here? Or is that, do you There's, think that's going to be a widespread around the, the, the world? Because it's, it's a global issue. Yeah, it's, not it's just a global a, issue like I know one person who lives here and works with youth back home because she's not allowed to, back home for her Sierra Leone. She's not allowed to go back home because she fears for her life. But then there's other people who've started from home. Although she, although that person has moved to the UK, she's mm-hmm. got she's sent messages back to her brothers and she started from home. And I think that's key. If you start from home, if you is to in order to solve the problem. In the long run, you got to start from one place. Mm-hmm. If she starts from home and starts educating her brothers to stop it from happening to her nieces um, and the rest of the kids and the, her cousins and all that, then they can spread the message forward. Yeah. There has to be someone who's ready. Like, in these communities, people are scared to speak up. Mm-hmm. And if there's one person, you just need one person to speak up. If that one person is willing to speak up, then you'll have more people who'll be like, who they'll, they'll realise they have choices. Mm-hmm. Like, they've questioned it. Obviously, if they've questioned it, there's something wrong with it. So there's a, it's sense, that of, one a sense question. Of yeah, it's that one run. question that needs to start off for everyone to start thinking about it. And I, I, I think it's all down to education. Education. What about yourself? Um, is there any, you know, other than education or, you know, if you want to add on to that, or is there any physical, other, you know, other than going out and teaching people about the issue, is there anything else that you think can be implemented um, to, to stop the problem from happening? Um, I think, I mean, I suppose it's a form of education, but I think um, having sort of meetings perhaps with elders, having open meetings where it's, uh, it's discussed, um, you know, in a kind of community setting, um, in, in a sort of place where everybody feels as though they are allowed to express how they feel I think sort of gathering people together it sounds mm-hmm. as though from some of the research we've done that's worked really well in a lot of other countries so yeah. we need to kind of open the doors for that to happen over yeah. here as well mm-hmm. so I think um, regarding what I read in um, I've got the article here I know I shouldn't be pulling it from under the table <laughs> but um, regarding one of the articles I read yeah, a sector in Kenya um, and they've managed to overcome the problem of FGM while they, they're doing it at the moment um, and they've gone through alternative methods of rites of passages. Um, so instead of, you know, women going into womanhood and, and having, you know, being mutilated and having things cut off and things like that, they found alternative rights. Um, and I think that's a very good way, is finding mm. alternative means to make mm. a woman still feel like a woman without making her feel like a woman. Mm. Um, you know, de- and, and dehumanising her. Um, but I definitely think, you know, FGM is more than just a rite of passage. As I said, I think it's a cultural issue. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, I think maybe inputting alternative means in and also consequences as well. Um, obviously, now people are starting to realise the problem with FGM. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's any ways, you know, of implementing any consequences, um, harsher realities for people that are, are encouraging it. Um, so possibly... Um, I'm not sure how the law is working around it at the moment in mm. this country. I should actually research that. Um, and I don't think there's as anyone's ever been prosecuted in the UK yeah. because it's difficult. It's FGM difficult is something face. that's not that's you can't see it on the face. If someone's gone through FGM, how do you know? Mm. It's how just, do you? I suppose looking out for signs is a, yeah. um, is it's more preventative. Mes- I think measures. one of the biggest signs is during summer holidays when you realise yeah. that parents are taking kids away and then you're creating awareness in schools amongst mm-hmm. teachers mm-hmm. and if they see these signs, it's everyone who's in contact with the kids at a young age 
who the kids are comfortable to talk to, like mm-hmm. teachers, um, family members as well. Like it's not necessary that everyone in the family agrees with it. Yeah. So if they're comfortable with talking to anybody about it, and it's about teaching the kids that you know, if there's so, if you're at risk at so, of something like this, there are people out there to help you. Yeah. There are people who are willing to stop this from it's happening. Just making to you. it. Se- it's just kind of taking it apart from yeah. making it seem like it's a normal thing. Mm. Um, and I definitely think you guys have made very valuable points. And I'm hoping everybody watching this. Um, can go out and you know conduct a bit of their own research about what um, FGM is because um, like I said I didn't know the full extent and the full issue I knew it was a problem but I didn't know the full extent so hopefully um, this video helps everyone to go and have a look at it from their own perspectives and things like that and see if there's any ways you can personally help uh, resolve the issue um, you know it, it may not take you know one person to do it but as as no sheen said if you know one person goes into a small sector and educates everyone else about it then a massive change can happen um the, we're going to close this up now um, and we're really grateful for you guys watching um, but if there's any arguments you've got towards um the, the the problem with fgm whether you think it should continue if it's a cultural value that you know the western world shouldn't be getting involved with um or anything like that um you know, feel free to find us on our social media pages. All links are posted below. And all the research that we've found, personally, we're going to, you know, um, upload onto our Twitter accounts and things like that. But thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you. Thank you.